give you place only comfortable experiences onto your path, meaning where your personal bias is never challenged and you're a kind, peace-loving being and you mostly attract peace-loving circumstances and beings and you always share compassionately and lovingly and kindly and you don't believe in killing. It's very, very hard to not become a personally biased being in that state because you never challenge yourself. But it may very well be that your higher self at some point creates a circumstance of paradox where neither option seems right to your personal idea of kindness. And you have to make a choice to either kill this or that, or something even worse will happen. Go ahead, what are you gonna do? That really brings your consciousness to the fact that you have a bias. Otherwise, you're not forcing yourself to see that bias. You're not seeing the energetic dynamic and complications or subtleties that lie within your energetic construct that are of personal bias nature, as well as of a genuine nature of spirit wanting to share love and light. But it's also filtered to some extent through the idea that something is good and something is bad. And I could never imagine myself doing this. If you still have the idea that you can never imagine yourself doing one thing, investigate, you got some investigation to do. Because we can all do everything. In fact, we're all doing everything. We are the killer. We are the rapist. We are the soldier. We are the butcher. If you cannot find compassion for those that kill, whether it is out of anger or out of any other reason, if you cannot ever imagine yourself doing that, think again, just for the sake of experiment, just for the sake of self-transcendence, just for the sake of true kindness to all that is. For true kindness to the perpetrator that you're seeing as separate out of your idea that something else is kinder. But separating others out as others is the most unkind thought you can offer the one creator. So transcend your bias, no matter how real and true and purified it feels, how spiritually condoned it feels, and expand your vision a little bit. See what other point of view could also apply to that circumstance. From what way could you see it that the killing in that circumstance would actually not be detrimental with being in alignment? How could you kill? It's a great thing. I can't imagine. Well, let's expand you. Imagine killing something out of complete love and balance and clarity. Can you imagine? Would you mind taking the microphone? I mean, you can stay there if you want to sit there. But. I have an, a couple of scenarios that came to mind when you were talking, which were, you know, the, the defense of a child or... The defense of a child, self for Self-defense. Yeah, or self-defense. Yes, but I mean, th those are perhaps more about attachment to the child or mm -hmm. attachment or to common, the self. Or common sense, or bal even balanced clarity in that moment. Imagine being completely unattached from the kid for whatever reason, I'm not saying this is humanly necessary or possible, but imagine being completely unattached to the kid and having equal love and appreciation for the one that's about to kill the kid as well as for the kid, just for the sake of imagination, right? Imagine, even if it's your kid, like for some reason, there's equal amount of appreciation for both these creatures. You see them both as the creator, choosing their reality. There could be a balanced choice in that moment that allows you to intervene and kill the killer that was about to kill the kid. And there could be a scenario, as taboo as this may sound, where it would actually seem more sensible to let the killer kill the kid. You don't know, that's the thing. You don't know until the moment is there. As soon as you write a law book down for yourself ahead of time, you're not in the moment, you're not intuitive, you're not transcending your bias, and you cannot come up with a clear solution in that moment. And there's so much more that we tend to not see that is not physical evidence, that is metaphysical evidence. So many data points that linger around in the ether at any given moment, around any given event, around any given human and its motives and its background that we cannot see if we believe in right and wrong. We have to transcend that idea. And I'm not saying, I'm not at all encouraging you to do bad things. I'm not at all encouraging you to become violent, not at all. But you'll see that as you become more loving and more freely yourself, you will also transcend your good and bad ideas, which might scare you at first. But it's so rewarding. And I can honestly say, if you truly want to be kind more than you want to pretend to be kind, then you have to transcend yourself because it's the only way to become kinder to all that is. I can genuinely share that I've become less harmful as a being, much less harmful as a being. Even though I was very much rooted in kindness as a kid, I would never punch anyone back. I would never do anything like that. I would just let people walk over me because I was so kind. I'm so much kinder now to all that is than I was coming from kindness. But in ways that I cannot even explain to you, you have to experience for yourself. 
Thank you for clarifying your perspective. Well, thank you for asking. Yeah. So it takes courage, huh? It takes courage to transcend your own beliefs. But when you do, it's going to be so rewarding because you open up the valve of infinite consciousness, of infinite wisdom, of infinite love, of endless abundance, of endless compassion. And you will start to be able to act responsibly in the moment instead of reactively from an idea. You become empty. You become non-personally attached. And as a result, you'll be experiencing that much more joy and freedom and eternity and deathlessness and transcendence and joy and communion with the one. And at the same time, your actions will be that much more balanced and you'll know that they will be more balanced without being arrogant about it. You'll just know because it will feel holistically so much better than to just act kindly, which is already great. In general, it's a great rule. It's a great idea. Act with kindness, act with compassion and understanding and love. It's a great, amazing rule. And it still applies to my life, but it applies to it naturally, not out of an idea. It applies to it responsibly, not out of reaction. So you have to be courageous if you want to be truly kind. So ask yourself, is my desire to know what I know, or is my desire to be truly kind? And if you want to be truly kind, ask yourself, what do I really know about kindness, except the idea I know from television and what it's not like?